Good day. Today we will demonstrate parts of emsstartups.ai. The first question that we asked ourselves is that the platform must be persuasive for user journey engagement. It has to have both form and substance. We looked around and found that the Bloomberg terminal was probably the most persuasive platform for the capital markets. So the look and feel of EMS is that of a Bloomberg terminal. EMS is basically a tri-party ecosystem. The first party is the platform itself, the purpose of which is to reduce friction in finding information, collaborating and connecting. The second party is the community, the stakeholders in the startup ecosystem, the startups, the investors, the media and the government. And the third party in the ecosystem are the assets, which are the startups themselves. We basically are taking an artificial intelligence approach to finding deeper insights into the startups in the emerging markets. So the output and the outcome is robust and provides much color. We basically start with existing databases on startups and hence complementing them and supplementing them. The next part was showcasing the startups. I come from the capital markets. We wanted to showcase startups much like the way stock market investors are used to viewing stocks. Candlesticks, you'll see startups uh, positioned and shown by way of candlesticks over time series. You'll also see on the platform a scrolling ticker of startups to give that look and feel. My colleague and co-founder will provide more in depth about showcasing the startups. Thank you. Hi, I'm Azhar Mustafa, the CTO and co-founder of emstartups.ai. We will talk about sentiment candlesticks reach, engagement, and knowledge grid, which are the core concepts in the EM startup platform. Let's go. Here is a sample of a sentiment candlestick for a company. The green represents more positive sentiment on that day. The red represents more negative sentiment on that day. The blue tick represents the neutral sentiment on that day. Here is a time series sentiment candlestick for custom over 10 months. Our AI engine reads social media data to produce sentiments. Before producing the sentiments, our AI engine will cleanse irrelevant and information data before it's being processed. What will be interesting is to look at before peak time and after peak time in this chart. So let's look into it. If we go before the peak time, which is around April, we can click to it and we'll see there are two major issues. One of it is about investment round and the other is on the partnerships. And you can see the number of positive, neutral and negative with the engagement and reach. Reach is basically the number of followers or number of people that, uh, that is following these issues. And that number engagement is number of shares plus number of comments that actually talk around this issue. If you really want to go into detail, we can see that there are few chapters about this, and we can see that people are talking about uh, fundraising on Carson. And there are many actually conviction that uh, highlighted here. If you really want to go into detail, you just can click on this and you can read the detail on about this news at the same time you can see about the also other the partnership there are few things that uh, show that it has been uh, this company has partnered with vibrant capital uh, maybe, uh, probably in indonesia so if you really think carefully this is what causes the uh, the the rise or the ascending part of the the sentiment but now if you want to go on the, uh, the the descending part which is around june we can also click on it and we can see that there are some news that may affect the uh, that may cause some descending part of the sentiment and we can see here this is uh, they're talking about SPAC, one of the policies that may affect uh, custom itself. Okay, 
So, uh, in return, if you really see carefully, you can actually go into the peak and uh, before the peak and after the peak and analyze what's the common issue. Okay. So, if uh, my uh, what what does this do good to the investors? For the investors, the investor can get deep inside straight away without having to read many many articles or many many Twitter posts or social media posts just to understand what's going on. And it's the same for the government that uh, in uh, the government will be able to understand what causes certain sentiment to go up, what causes sentiment to go down. And uh, in this case, uh, for uh, the spec can be reviewed again, the spec, so that uh, it, it, can uh, it can understand why it gives certain kind of uh, sentiment uh, downgrade for this company for the corporate com of the uh, custom it will be also good to see that to understand what makes their reputation goes up and down just by looking at the uh, at the sentiment charts of the candlestick so uh, even for the media the media can actually drill down to what uh, to the real causes of uh, the sentiment that goes up and down before the peak and after the peak. So, uh, in return, you can see this is actually a complementary to existing information, regulation that is being out there. It can be it can be disruptive, since you can see that it we able to drill down into what what really matters in matter of seconds. How do you compare the performance? of custom based on the sentiment candlesticks. To do that, we come up with a concept called sentiment index. Sentiment index is an index over a bucket of companies in the industry that being chosen to represent the index. For example, this is a sentiment index and this index is coming from few companies that we will select under fintech industry that falls under custom industry also. As a side note, an event can be positive or negative at the same time. For example, if a startup raise 50% of their target, an influencer might say this is bad because they couldn't fulfill their target, so the sentiment is negative. On the other hand, another influencer might say, well, despite the gloomy economy, they can still raise fun. So, the sentiment is positive. As you can see, the sentiment is based on who is talking about the statement. Now, let's talk about reach and engagement on the ascending and descending part. Let's, so, if we click on the reach chart, okay, which is in yellow in color, you can see the list of influencers that talk, that actually talk about that, uh, that day. There is a Brita Satu and Charles, and if you, uh, these are the influencers, and Brita Satu is an, a news site, and Charles is just a person in Twitter. That's why you see the reach is much bigger for Berita Satu. And if you want to see what they talk about on that day, on 6th of April, you can see that they're talking about custom and they talk about e-commerce mobile for the integration. And if you really want to go into detail, you can just click on it and you can see the detail of the, the news. Okay. And it's the same for Charles here, and they actually tweet about something, and you can see, you can see the detail of the tweets about the valuation of custom. It's coming from here. You can see the detail, and you can come back if you want to see. This is the same if you want to see on the descending part of the reach, which is here, and you can see there are some engagement on the B, the influencer B, and you can click on it and see what they're talking about. Okay, 
So the whole idea of reach and engagement is to see who's talking on that day. Are they actually a big influencer? Okay, as you can see, influencer is can be a person, can be an organization, can be a new site who has followers. Okay, so it gives some impact to what uh, they say if they have a very big followers, especially if they have very high engagement. Now we are talking about knowledge grid. Knowledge grid is just categories and topics that are related to the industry that the startup is in. Okay, so for example, we show we see this company Carson. Okay, you can see the knowledge grid here, and if you click on it, you can see a, a grid of topics and category that are, are is relevant to Carson. So you see investment, business development, applicability. Under it, you see investor profile, investor rounds, and by the color, the the the, the depth of the color, you can see that uh, the heat map for for each grid. And if you see like this, like uh, the dark color, it means that it is very active, and you can actually click on it. Uh, again, uh, you can go again here and you can click on the investment rounds for example you can see that um, what are what are the news related to investment round and you can see what is it all about from 1st April to 7 May and this is about to raise 200 million and these are all the related uh, conversation about about the, the the this investment round and you can see the detail if you want to let's say like this this tweets and the, then you can see uh, who's talking about it okay and you can come back and this is this is about knowledge grid where we actually uh, arrange the topics and category in a grid layout yeah, just just to make sure that uh, investor can capture the most essence in a faster way and if you really look uh, carefully on the on the bottom uh, under the rich charts there's also a knowledge grid uh, from april to july this is actually just a snapshot so if you see a pattern or the ascending pattern you can straight away kind of see the the relation and this is related to investment round and uh, partnership and uh, on uh, around June the, the issues is a bit more to government relations if you can click here and you can see that uh, this is about uh, the government talking about government of Malaysia talking about government uh, unicorn projects and again you can click on the detail of the news and this is coming from a Twitter okay so that's all for knowledge grid thank you Based on my experience running candidate sentiments for political scenario in Malaysia, we believe sentiment on founders are important as well. This is to help investors to understand the risk they are taking with the founders and it is time to understand deeply about what founders like and what founders live, how founders live their life. So we built this concept what we call knowledge grid for founders. In Knowledge Grid for Founders, we'll, uh, the AI will look into few areas. The AI will actually uh, read conversations from social media like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and so on and classify them into few areas that is relevant to the investors. For example, their lifestyle, whether they are involved in the legal criminal case, whether who are their circle of friends and family members, whether what event they go to and what company what are their affiliations so we they it does go deep down into the cars they are driving where they are eating the dining and so on okay so we we do believe this will be really helpful for the investors and also for the government who give grant for the founders One of the biggest challenges to provide sentiment is to get good clean data to process. 
This is because most of the time, we have to work with third-party provide data providers like Twitter. In this example, we want to know about Grab, a unicorn in the right-hailing services. We pass the keyword Grab to the third-party data providers and in return, we will get uh, good data plus irrelevant data plus mis misinformation data that is all bundled together. Irrelevant data it means that there is a keyword in the post written, in the Twitter post written, but the, the grab keyword does not mean the sentence or the post doesn't mean it's not relevant to our findings. For example, you grab a cup and so on. Misinformation data means the data is make, uh, is make up with, uh, with a lie or is to make belief on a uh, on a perception okay so what happens is when it gets to our ai engine we will filter all this data irrelevant and whatnot and after we we uh, the ai read and process it it will pass to the analytics uh, engine to be rendered for the users at the same time we will have an our internal qa to verify the results and to make sure that uh, what is not captured as irrelevant or misinformation data will be labeled and uh, all annotated and be passed back to our AI engine to be trained. Analogous to building a spam filter for our email, over time it will become very good because it has been trained with a lot of data. A few concluding remarks on EMS startups. Um, First, on our stakeholders, from a government point of view, we will have a page for each government. Governments in the emerging markets are moving towards knowledge-based economies, and the startup ecosystem is an extremely important part of it. We'll be able to provide them a heat map of the sectors. We'll be able to provide another way of looking at the insights on their grant giving, so it'll help them with respect to policy making. With respect to the media, the present coverage is on funding, valuation, lead investors. We'll be able to provide them a sentiment analysis, a knowledge grid, not only on the startups, but also the founders. So they provide more in-depth stories, and we think that's going to add value to a better output. With, with, with respect to the startups themselves, um, they may not have the resources to create uh, sentiment analysis and knowledge grids, we think it's an important part of them telling their story to their followers, to their paying users, so on and so forth. And we think that this type of data is important in their pitch deck. And many startups are growing in organically by way of acquisitions. So startups themselves may become investors and they'll find this information useful. The final point we wanted to make, which we thought was interesting, is YC may potentially use the output of EMS startups in looking at applications of startups in another way. We thank you and uh, all the very best and stay safe.